Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back again to the International 2017. We're on the B stream here, taking a look at our second game of this series. IGV just took down the previously undefeated LGD Gaming, and they did it in pretty fabulous fashion. Murano kind of went completely out of control, was able to just farm away. Sven had a really nice time. Paparazzi playing that hero. I'm Lyrical, joined as well by Merlini. Um, what are you hoping to see this time from LGD as far as a switch up? Is it like a particular hero or anything that comes to mind? Uh, draft wise, just have heroes that do similar things. Uh, I don't know. I I never really envisioned this team as a team that struggled a lot with teamwork. Ame is left to his own devices a lot. He likes his like Mask Madness farmers. Uh, so generally, that's not the big issue for them. It's yeah, it's usually just teamwork and, um, yeah, yeah, I, or it's usually not teamwork rather. Sorry, teamwork is not usually the issue. It's it tends to be other stuff. I I remember for a long time it was like LGD would almost come close to qualifying, but then they would like overstep their bounds a little bit and press too far. And this is a different type of loss for them than we're used to seeing. Yeah, hopefully the worst game we'll see from them. I would say, hopefully, the last last game was. Yeah, so Earth Spirit. Uh, Victoria probably played the best on their team, I would say, last game. The Tusk, who had the, they had won one big team fight, I would say, and that was uh, definitely off the back of Victoria. Also, maybe give uh, maybe a more independent hero, one that doesn't rely on his team to follow through with him on everything, because I think he's a guy that just kind of needs to be left to, uh, to do whatever he wants. Yeah, I would kind of agree. Um... And I think that Victoria, uh, he's been known for a while as one of the really good Earth Spirits in China up there with the likes of a, you know, Dogfights or a, a Bobica. Um, and now it's going to be kind of a different look. IGV taking their Sand King and Shadow Shaman early on. You had mentioned that this was the heroes that uh, they really like, but Visage coming out. This is the hero that everybody's been talking about. What makes this hero so strong right now? Uh... His birds are really good. I don't think anyone else is like a good global uh, global summon. Like Lone Druid doesn't, like his bear can't even attack if it's more than X range away from him. So for him being able to split push out lanes without being there is huge. That is, I, I can't really think of any other hero that can do that right now. Like Lycan Wolves aren't strong enough. Um, Triant, Forge maybe? Spirit with Invoker, like that used to be a real big broken part of him. Who'd you say, Triant? Triant maybe? Yeah, but Triant, that's depending on him getting eggs. Uh, oh, for, I mean uh, NP. Nature's oh, NP. Yeah, NP. Yeah. NP's pretty decent at that too. So there's very few heroes that can uh, push out lanes while not being there, and it just creates immense lane pressure. People talk about shoving in lanes a lot, and Visage does it better than anyone. And I guess the other thing too is that they can actually kill heroes if supports get found out by <laughs> yeah. those birds. It really sucks. It really sucks for Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman just hates life when Visage is in the game. Well, second picks coming down all around. Uh, the plus side that you do have of this lineup so far is that it, it does definitely, from IGB, want to push together as a squad. I guess there's split pushing potential, too, from the Shadow Shaman, where he can kind of go both ways. Like, you can either Aether Shock out Creep Waves off to the side and try and get to a tower and sneak down the wards, or you can just group together as a team and fight around those wards. They did ban out the bat in the first phase. In July was versus quote-unquote a bat counter, but he destroyed the Slark very badly. And he didn't have that great of a laning phase. He died in a lane, he got his blink relatively late, and they still were able to crush. So, yeah, I think in July, uh, that, that's his best hero. Um, D, as far as, like, going back and forth with, like, a, a split push style or a, a group up together and push style, is there a a way that you would like to see IGV play it more than the other way? Yeah, definitely. Definitely team fight. I think this fight, this patch is mostly more about team fight. Yeah, they can pull out AM and win now and then, but uh, I, I generally, most of the time, I would say AM wins are draft wins. Um, not uh, just a higher percentage than most other heroes, I would say. So you don't want to rely on draft wins. You want to rely on play wins. Okay. Especially at such a long tournament. Yeah, there's just too much to. 
do otherwise and so many opportunities for teams to research stuff you play so many games in such a short period of time and then you go back to what's comfortable and then you know, if you're relying on something like that it might not end up working out well so visage earth spirit shadow shaman sand king most likely all supports do you m place much stock in the the visage mid or is that just sort of more for the pubs that people have been talking about it it's all right it's not amazing it's just, it's hard to kill, but I don't know. It's so-so, I would say. Gimmicky. It's the term I would use. All right, I like that idea. Sven is, the Sven ban's weird. I think the Chen ban is okay. The troll and the clock aren't that strange. It's mostly the Sven ban. Sven ban's weird because they haven't really shown that they have a lot of physical damage, nor... I'm trying to think why why Sven? I feel like I've seen maybe play Meepo once or twice. I don't know if this would be the game for it all, but oh, a mag. Interesting. Mag without a troll. I guess mag jug, mag void. Mag void could be a thing. Mag void actually sounds pretty good here. It would be void into a couple of different melee heroes, but they've got a lot of damage to throw into it still. I mean, even Earth Spirit. Magnetize on top of everybody. You've got uh, Soul Assumption, which is a decent chunk of damage, too. Could be Mag AM. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good combo. It is a good combo. I mean, ugh, you're just going to lose all your towers, though, if that happens, right? I don't know. I, I hate AM, but that's a different story entirely. Weaver's going to be taken for IGB. Could be Weaver Slark, or sorry, Mag Slark, but I don't know. Like, if you're Ame, you're probably, your confidence is probably a little bit shattered, I would say, after the last game. You probably don't want to play Slark after that last one. Unless you want to redeem yourself, but I don't think that's necessarily the case. It might be Ursa. Maybe loves to play Ursa. Yeah, he does. This is a hard Ursa game, though. Stampede, Weaver. It's, it's already, like... You want you want it against heroes that can't hide. Like, yeah. uh, Bristleback. Bristleback's a prime example of a hero that just, like, you know, you're up there. You're, you're out there for everyone to see. Same with Sven. You're not... You're not trying to be sneaky about, you just run in there. And uh, same with Tidehunter, like these heroes struggle a lot versus Ursa. I mean, with Lycan, you could do the shenanigans with the birds again. Howl birds, and then you've got, you know, empowered Lycan. I thought you said Halbert. I was like, Heaven's Halbert? Where does that fit into this, sir? <laughs> you know, you haven't Halbert the birds, and then they can't attack you, right? That's the way that works. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they call them Halberds. Halbert. Legion Commander, another maybe special. Yeah. Very good versus the Sand King and the Shadow Shaman and the Centaur Warrior. I think the the press the attack is really, really good. Um, and the long duration disable versus Weaver is so so because Weaver usually gets Lincoln Sphere. Earth Spirit's already really good versus Weaver though, so I don't think this Weaver's gonna have a great game. That's the thing about Weaver versus Earth Spirit. Oh. There's no item that you can really build to help you out that much. I guess BKB, but that's not an item that you really want. You can still just get dueled and died. Die. And they don't have any defensive hero. They already picked both their supports and their offlaner on the side of IG Vitality. It really feels like this is a kind of the perfect pick, and I think that it is going to be played in the mid lane. Maybe as one of the few players that actually still likes to take it there. Yeah. It's going to be a PA as the last pick. So double empowered heroes. They have a decent amount of lockdown once they get their ultimates up, but before that, it's it does feel like it's very dependent upon the Earth Spirit. Do you think that's a problem at all? That they might not be able to make stuff happen around the map super early, or can they just win the lanes really hard? I think they can win the lanes. Visage and Earthspeed are pretty good early game, so I don't... Yeah, I think they're fine. Okay. I, th I don't think... The Centaur lane, I think, is not going to go well for them. Ooh, Timbersaw owns here. Oh, man. And that's going to be a mid-Timber, I believe, yep. against the... Legion Commander. That's actually not that bad of a matchup for, for Legion Commanders. You, If you get deep up by Whirling Blades, you just press the attack it off. Oh, okay. So I've seen this matchup a few times, and L or LC usually comes out on top. Uh, you can't really harass. Uh, actually, I, the most of the times I've seen it has been safe lane or off lane. But I think mid lane is still a similar story. All right, well, we'll see if it's going to end up working out. Very different styles from the drafts, very different philosophies as well, but at least it's not different philosophies within a team. 
Um, this time around, do you think LGD has what it takes to, to put them on top? Have they found the recipe for success? I actually like IG Vitality's draft more. I think the Centaur is very difficult to zone out here. Uh, Earth Spirit plus Visage, like, I guess you can kind of click on him, but with poor man shield, he's going to be very resilient. The Weaver, I would say, is my main concern because of the long duration disables from Earth Spirit and Magnus and LC. Uh, but the Timber Solace should also, I think, have a very easy game. His lane should be fairly easy, and he, there's like almost no magic damage for him to worry about. Maybe some soul assumptions here and there, but his uh, max reactive armor is going to pay off heavily. All right, well, we're getting ready to hop into this game right now. Now, I'm certainly excited. Love to see all these heroes, unique picks and flavors. I don't know if there are any of the ones that haven't been picked yet that have been taken in this game. Um, I don't know. I don't maybe, maybe the Legion? I, would, oh, I can double check on that. Okay. Uh, the one thing I don't like about LG's lineup in particular is that there's no tower hitter. Right. That is, that's, that's an issue. Yeah, and we'll have to watch and see what it is that they use to try and, uh, you know, have as a, a tower hitter. I, I guess the idea could be you just kill them all and then you end up going for it. But, <laughs> you know. Elsie uh, has been picked. Okay. CM has not been picked? What? CM got picked just like the oh, okay. match. Isn't that insane, though? It was yeah. like the most <laughs> picked here. Oh, Kiev. Slark got picked, too. So, Slark, uh, there's another one off the list. Oh, 50 seconds for this. No problem. I already did my predictions. I'm just clicking randomly. It doesn't even matter. Ame is going to break the smoke that was moving out from IGV. And are they actually going to... They pinged like they wanted to go around the trees and, like, dive tower already. But they're just going to secure that they get this rune. Head back out afterwards. Maybe is standing guard as well as 11 over here in the bottom lane. And there are some pings that are coming out that there might be people in the area. So Ame, playing it safe. Playing it fine. It's going to hang out here. And Earth Spirit is also... I think Victoria wants to go in and see if he can snag this rune away from Paparazzi. Eleven is here also. There's an opportunity there. Nah, they're not going to be able to get it, but they do force him back. So, trading out the bounty runes. LGD get two of them. IGB get two of them. Now we're off to the races. Checking out the lanes. Nothing unusual as of yet. Victoria does smoke and it does pop super. Hello. No chicken snack for you, Victoria. That yeah, would have been great. Would have been glorious. They're also sending the courier the long way around right now. They're expecting the dogfights were over there. They are going to roll in and hit onto Sakata, but no luck. So dogfights will not be rewarded, I do not believe, unless they send it the short way back, which they might just do. Oh, Ami went for level one blink strike. Cool. That was actually a lot of damage. With the Blightstone, pretty cool. Dog fights. Moving in. They send the courier back, and he won't find it. Yeah, the Blightstone was uh, a cool thing, and now having the blink strike, he's getting all those little attacks in on him. <laughs> pretty good. Sometimes you'll see oof, depending, but... Yeah, fight some, I think, like, EM supports around, and Victoria already has the oof, so no need for another one. You roll in and actually catch on to in July. He will get the hoof stomp, making sure that he's able to get away from all these heroes from LGD who have been committed to him. So three heroes up top, uh, and as you mentioned, it's sort of tough for them to force in July out of lane. Yeah, big beefy centaur. He didn't go for the poor mission, though, so he could potentially die because because of that. He does have a lot of regen in response, so that's also pretty nice. Dogfights is around. Trying to drag the creep wave. Nice. Yeah, and that means that they won't... Well, do they actually find the pull? They managed to get three of those creeps. Wow, that was a nice pull from Yao. Yeah, really good reaction there. And in return, it looks like it's going to be Dogfights who is going to move towards mid, but maybe we'll be back up to full as he's just used his salve, and it could potentially try and make something happen here, but it seems like it'd be really tough for them to actually push maybe all the way back. Yeah, he's he's missing a lot of XP at the tower. Those range creeps. He wants those range creeps. Oh, get in there. He's going. He's going for Gloak. And he can actually probably do a decent amount of overwhelming odds. Yeah, he's going to hit him pretty hard. 
But it's still been dogfights. He hasn't really gotten that much done. Still level 1. Uh, Victoria up to level 2 now. And we'll see if this regresses into, like, something else. He's going to try and steal the creeps again. Yeah, but in the meantime, they're getting this huge creep. This five creep wave into the double spawn. Centaur is very unhappy about that one. We'll be able to soak up something. But oh. Victoria's red dog fight's going at it. Yeah, they're taking the damage. Uh, does also have the stun to follow up if you want to go for it, but they actually lose the creep wave because of that. It'll still head off to the side, and we'll see if Injuli ends up going down. Nonetheless, they do have another boulder smash if they want to use it, but won't go for it. I thought he might have tried to uh, boulder him to <laughs> stop that self. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maybe he has drained Sakata of all his mana. We haven't talked about it a ton, but bottom lane, Magnus has been able to get a decent amount for himself. 14 last hits right now on the mag. He's having a great time as top lane in July again in trouble. They have another soul assumption. The boulder smash is there, and in July is going to go down as Yao draws first blood. Nicely played, nicely played. Even with all the creep dragon shenanigans, they aren't able to really win out in that. And maybe he's not beating Asakata, but he is not far behind. I guess maybe after this creep way, they should be relatively even, unless Super gets the shackle. Yeah, that's really a big problem, and should be the death of him. Not able to get away. No points in press the attack, interestingly enough. So yeah, that's a little surprising for me, considering the way I've uh, seen LC's try and win that lane over to me. Well, Victoria did come mid now. He's going to soak up whatever experience was there. But ganking a Timber feels like it'd be quite tough. Yeah, that's just not happening. Uh, also, the bounty rune is stolen, it looks like, by Victoria, or Super, rather, who almost killed off the Courier as well. And maybe taking so much damage from this, Man, at level 6, it feels like Timber saw, considering we haven't had any points to press the attack, he's just going to be able to completely bully maybe out of lane. As up top, more damage coming through. They take down Yao. That Visage already gone, and now the Shackles connecting on the Ame. He's also in trouble. IGV have got LGD's number. Super just appearing out of nowhere in all of these lanes. And Victoria's trying his best to find anyone to gank. Maybe. Oh, nicely that done. Was, that was a lot of damage. Should be able to find the in July kill as well, unless the hoof stomp comes out. Long duration, roll in. Victoria's been able to find him, <laughs> kicks him out of the game. <laughs> so hilarious to see. Uh, yeah, your dead body will be desecrated as we shove it across the earth. <laughs> what a guy. Ame has no home. He's yeah. a refugee, flipping off scraps in the mid lane. Look yeah. at this tower, it's so low already. I love Timbersaw as a hero. I hate playing against him, but he's so much fun when you get into these types of matchups. There's just not a ton of magical damage. Just it's do whatever you want. And heroes that struggle a lot versus move, like PA swing, struggles massively. Like Blur is useless against a hero that never attacks. And he wants to be attacked, even furthermore. Yeah. Well, in July, he's gotten a ton. Um, the plus side if you're LGD is that you are still getting a lot on your Magnus. He only has two points, or one point up rather, and in power right now. is starting to get more into him. And that's going to be probably the comeback mechanism for LGD. When is it that we need to start seeing, like, you know, a couple of these heroes retreat to the jungle? Is there a time for that, or do they not really even have that luxury? I think when you have an LC, you don't want to retreat that much. Maybe one or two stacks, big stacks, uh, just to get like big items, but I think overall you generally want to be fighting a lot more. And, uh, and just, like, here we go. Yeah, bottom lane, they ended up wearing them down long enough in a fortuitous invis rune. Yep, first duel. Perfect rune, probably the only rune that mm, Actually, yeah, he doesn't have RP, so there was no play. Like if he had a haste, let's say, RP in a duel wouldn't have happened, so. Paparazzi played the odds. <laughs> Definitely, as Victoria is continuing to get ran at. Tier 1 tower still stands, and Victoria was able to draw the aggro, so it does keep their tower alive, but Sakata, again, just bullying, maybe. Like, they, they just don't have an answer for this, and if Super comes back in and is able to find the shackles, this actually is probably going to be maybe dead right now, as he does find those shackles down now, and 
all the damage to the world. He actually doesn't quite have enough there. Needs a couple more right clicks to be able to find it. Maybe they've overstepped their welcome. There's a stun on it too as well. Dogfights trying to get back in a way and now they find the duel onto him. So uh, IG Vitality so close to being able to make a big couple kills, but instead they lose two. He didn't have enough mana there, right, on Sakata? Yeah. Wow. That hurts. This situation where maybe you, you would consider not actually maxing reactive armor first. He actually had damage issues there because he had max reactive. He's actually like tanky enough. I don't actually think he needs any more armor. He actually needs a little bit more firepower. However, I guess it is nice having that feeling of like, yeah, no one can kill me. But then he's still Exactly. Uh, I mean, they're all tanky on uh, IGV2, Centaur, and then Elusive on Weaver. That's two dual damage. So. Yeah. Eight minutes in, 20 damage. That's talent right there for most heroes. For some heroes. Yeah. Better than a talent. It's great. Yeah. It's better than PA talent. PA is only at 15 damage level 10. It's so underrated. God, look at Sakata again. Maybe just. There's no avenue for him to go anywhere. The second round of Chakram is about to be out, and Victoria barely able to get there in time to save the life of that Legion Commander. Bottom lane, they're going to take down 11 as well. Really no great way to stop that, and it just it can't stop him. The plus side also about this four points is now Sakata can just tank tower, and he is getting regen still from it, basically. And to juke around, he does find that Whirling Death. Get him within range for the second one. It's going to maybe be the death of him. Is going to find that kill. Silence comes a second too late. Stunned a little bit off the mark as well. And IGV, uh, he doesn't give a damn. Literally just standing there and tanking whatever they throw at him. Maybe he wishes he got one level press attack now. But the tower's still up. There is no siege creep, but looks like it might get denied fairly soon. Yeah, if they can throw <laughs> like all their spells on him. Probably still won't die. If he has max stacks on. Keeps on getting it. It's just standing in the creep wave there. Creating so much space for this Weaver too. Like you look at it and you've had four heroes, three to four heroes mid this entire time needing to make some type of play. And this meant that Weaver now has, you know, Treads, Aquila, and a Raindrop. He's had plenty of time. Not to mention the Centaur. Who yeah. died a couple times early, but now does have his early hood. Well, the movement in from LGD. They want to try and wrap around and see if they can find something on the Weaver. Barazzi, will he be spotted? Will he be picked off? Maybe knows where he is. They have vision now. They see him popping over. There it is. The stun comes through. Going to be able to find the duel. They need a bit more damage, and they are going to be able to find it. Another duel win for maybe. Paparazzi knew that Ganko was coming. He thought the smoke was going to come from a different angle. Now, 11, or rather in July, just pops the stampede, runs away, doesn't end up getting taken down. <laughs> this constant force in the mid lane. Sakata is now going to go over and well, take down these creeps that were stolen away from him by Ame. PA feels like a little child when up against Timbersaw. Okay, Burrow Strike comes through. The Visage Birds are going to be back up again in a second. Dogfights taking a lot of damage. They throw out a double edge. Dogfights maybe in further trouble as maybe is starting to fall as well. Press the attack, trying to get away. And all the damage is coming out from those birds to take it off, but the double edge is too much. In July, barely staying alive. The Burrow Strike, they're able to take down both of the birds. In July gets a cool 200 gold and stays alive. Maybe is dying a ton. We saw that engagement in the mid lane this this time too. He was just pushing a little bit too far ahead, and he doesn't have a blink dagger, so he needs some uh, needs some kills on his. Well, I guess he has three dual kills, so it's not that bad. But having three deaths this early as the mid hurts a lot compared to Sakata, who is just casually hitting T1. Those chakras. He does not care. And look at him! Like, what, what are they gonna do? They got all these heroes here, and no way to stop this from happening. The only impediment is his mana usage. And that's not going to be an issue too much longer, because after Ficken shot the hood, he's now going back for the Bloodstone. Yeah. Did he even eat a hood? <laughs> Probably not, but... I don't know. This is feeling like IGV have the game in the bag, almost. 
we haven't seen any of PA. So once PA gets some power, and we haven't seen any RPs. Yet, so don't call it too early, Gabe. All right, I'll hold faith. But Magnus, if he gets his tower, he'll have to link dagger, and then they can make plays with the power cleave. Cleaveness. We have seen a lot of comebacks today as well in a lot of these different games. Timbersaw is going to come back in, and with that, LGD might have to back out again. Although all of LGD is here. 11 no Blink Dagger yet. Victoria wrapping around. Literally five heroes are going to run at Sakata. If they can't kill him now, I don't know when they're going to be able to. The stuns come out. They're trying to bring him low. They have enough. And they're able to get the dual victory. If that didn't work, that, I mean. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah. You're not invincible. Around an 800 gold swing into their favor off the back of that. That's one of those classic cases of, how are they even gonna kill me? <laughs> and then you just jinx yourself. Yeah. I think that as long as that doesn't happen uh, a couple more times, and if that does start to happen a couple more times, then you're gonna be in a, a much better position That's for LGD. Dude, they're about to go for a blink yeah. RP on, on uh, paparazzi, so. Dual back off cooldown in one second. Don't sleep on LGD. Paparazzi is there. They do not have vision of him, but they know that he's gonna be heading over this way. Meanwhile, Paparazzi has basically no vision over the area. And when they see that... Oh, Sakata might die too, actually. Sakata's gonna come up the lane, he's not gonna have any stacks, and then he's gonna die again. Oh no, this is gonna happen. All right, we'll watch, we'll wait, we'll see. LGD, did they do it? They've actually left with maybe as well. So they're all out of there. And now they might just end up <laughs> losing 11. He's got to blink out of here. Oh, maybe left. He does have a TD in Oh, and now they caught Victoria also. All right. Well, it could have been beautiful, but they ended up paying out. Yeah, they had to push out their side lanes. So now they can farm with their Aegis a little bit too. Now that max power is... In the qu in the picture, and Magnus uh, has a blink dagger, so he can move around from lane to lane with ease. And Desolator's coming up too, so everything is uh is is getting there for LGD, but not if ITV can do something about it with the smoke. They're gonna run into 11 first in July. Jumps forward, hoof stomps, but off the mark. Dog fights there to clean up a little bit at least. But AD is there as well. They skewer up to the high ground and by the shrine. I don't think IGB want to push the envelope that far. I think they, they should have. I think he probably should have just turned around uh, for, like, a... I think he could have run in there, because Timbersaw was showing bottom. He was tanking the creep web in between the two and the T2, but they were still very scared. They're also right next to their shrine, right? But maybe waiting for those items that Dezo just completed on Ame. Now is the time. I don't know if they spotted out that that was a smoke, but the... Area did have a ward in it, so I think IGV realized that this is coming. They're trying to position themselves. They have some good vision. A ward is already down. In July, jumps in, able to find himself an Earth Spirit. Blown up right at the start of the fight. That's not the way you want to start if you're LGD. There's going to be the Stampede trying to run away. The stun in the midst of the Timber Chain forward. Paparazzi still staying alive, dealing out the damage onto Yao as well. The RP canceled by 11. Didn't want to waste it, but now he might not even be able to use it at all as they all end up falling. LGD get destroyed. Great play by IGB. That was almost all Centaur right there. In July, in the perfect place to pop the smoke under the Observer Ward. And then IGB were like, oh god, what do we do? What do we do right now? That yeah. was just not the angle to fight. Yeah. Uh, the Shaman Ward were already placed down. They already have an Observer Ward placed down. I mean, uh, look at LGD's Observer Ward. It's in a terrible position. It's maybe gonna die. He did end up getting some dual damage at the very least. Has a regen also, but with the bugs on him, yeah. So it's looking like not long for this world as they find the kill. But doesn't matter, got dual damage. Keep it up. <laughs> it might be a good game for Scepter. I was always wondering about that. It's It seems like it's such a specific item. Well, now you're magic immune, right? So you can actually kill anyone aside from Timber, I think, in a duel. One up. But also the rest of your team can't throw damage out there. Yeah, I, he has some power though. And okay. They can still apply the Desolator debuff, let's say. So it's 
I, I think actually pretty good here. This way you can just duel the Shaman and not care. You can duel the Sand King and not care about the Shaman. I guess you could also duel the Timber and then he can't do anything. And it's a long duration. Yeah, I don't know if that's worth it. Yeah. You're, just, you're also just sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> I guess you can still cleave people, right? Yeah, so probably, yeah. You'd have to be standing still <laughs> behind, <laughs> behind him. So. Uh, a lot of questions to be answered, that's for sure. And right now, it's IGB. Roshan scanned, but it didn't hit at all, because they're all sitting inside the pit. Yeah, nice. Uh, Ame definitely needs a BKB. He's trying to go towards it. Uh, you just need so much in this game, and it's a 7,000 net worth lead for IGB. After their day one, which looks slightly disappointing there, putting on a hell of a performance here, and you know, 2 0 the top team in the group would certainly put them on track towards you know, having yeah. a great finish. A lot of it seems rather uncomfortable in the Magnus, too, I must add. Uh, he has had how many RPs? Uh, he did, I don't think he's had one. Yeah. It, it was mostly that moment where they were close to the shrine and, and he blinked out, which was good. But he also could have turned it around. At, like, maybe even you go for an offensive RP, you go for the outplay there. Maybe you expect, like, Centaur to blink behind you and you just skewer back into your team instead of blinking out. So, I think there were other options available to him at, at right then, and that would have been a much better position for them. Remember the last fight that they just got whomped on was in the T2 where the wars were already placed. Would you rather take that fight or would you rather take a fight right below your shrine? And it was probably a call from one of his other cores that they didn't want to fight, but it was also, I think, a lot of his judgment in not choosing to engage right there. And he had a pretty good lane, too. His net worth is, like, pretty decent, but we just haven't seen it like, similar to his Tidehunter game where he didn't cast Ravage until 30 minutes in. Yeah. No, for sure. And it's just sort of a, a, a combination of things. Like you said, it's like the... Wanting to make sure that you get a... Oh, we'll have to hold that thought as we do have Visage getting ran down. Maybe is still behind enemy lines and could have gone for a counterplay, but would have been the death of him as well. Maybe hoping for a quick blink in and steal of a dual damage. But I think he actually needs BKB. I see him going for armlet. BKB or Scepter would be my play for him. Just because, like, I think he's just going to... Huge! Look at... Oh, what? He's, yeah. all, he's, he's got way a past now. his team. He's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you look at him, he's like, where is he? No, go, right yep. up, further up, further up, there he is. <laughs> Literally just tanking tower, he's like in between the barracks right now. Even with Dezo debuff, he's at 45 armor. All right, they skewer him back under the tier two towers. It's time to put it to the test. The duel, it's not quite working. Is it going to be enough? They do take down that Aegis. The but tower's it is dead, only the Aegis. He also doesn't have any reactive armor stacks, so they could potentially kill him again. Kill him quickly before reactive. Kata trying to run away the Lincoln Spear there. Burrow Strike onto two. Eleven still sitting with the Shadow Amulet. This isn't because he's done with the game. It's because he wants to find a big RP. Sakata sitting with all that reactive armor, and nobody is really being able to step up to him. They need to skewer him into the T4, and then maybe even then kick him back into the T4s even further. That was so insane. I can't believe he's just sitting there underneath the tower. Oh my god. What the hell? I guess, yeah. you know, he went to both pick up that plate mail. He had the Aegis. They get the tower because of it. Oh, it was definitely good, yeah. good for them. Well, LG trying to take the fight. The Shrine is still active. If they can just pop it. No, they don't. Now are they? Jump forward. Duel's there. It's already almost dead. They are going to be able to pop it down now. And Timbersaw still stands tall. They're going to try and jump through the silence, though. It was really well placed. And 11 able to find the catch with the RP onto one. At the very least, Sakata still staying alive, though, through all of it. They're able to take down the Shaman. But how much more can they really do? It's a trade one for one so far. Now the Burrow connects again onto two. LGD being ran through over and over again. Paparazzi actually able to make a hell of a lot of plays. And they <laughs> they just don't have an answer. It's weird. Like, uh, maybe keeps on getting out in the team fights, but he keeps on dying whenever they're not team fighting. He might need Silver Edge. Right? Yeah. I think if he gets a Silver Edge proc on the Timber, like in that instance, he's attacking the Shrine. There's no creeps around. He wasn't taking the Anxious at that point, so maybe they could have hit him and broken the reactive armor before he gets any stacks. However, wasn't the case. They're falling very far behind. They have huge damage issues, even though they have a pretty farm PA with Empower and they lead them with 64 damage, and you usually don't think of it as damage issues, but when damage is all physical versus Tipper's all just itemizes for tons and tons of armor, 
It's not looking good. For you. You're not gonna have a good time. <laughs> gonna have a bad time. Yeah. Oh, wow. Dude, only 22 minutes in. It seems way later, considering how farmed this. Because all the towers are gone. <laughs> they just killed them all. <laughs> There's nothing left right now for poor old LGD. Yeah. It's uh, it's definitely hurting. Um, and the next Roche is going to be a big problem. So, Shiva's guard uh, still a little ways away from Sakata, but showing that, you know, Timbersaw is still a very valuable pick if you happen to find the right game for it. Yep. I didn't particularly like the PA pick. I think PA is really good against... Uh, like cores that only rely on physical, but only when you know both of the cores. He didn't actually know like the bid and the and the save thing. Before. Like it's good for us, like you know TA plus, you know, like, like the minus one, like the SF plus whatever, or like a drow light up that you see very often. But when you don't know that mid hero and one that literally does not right click at all, <laughs> the hero loses a lot of value because one of his skills is fairly useless. Yeah, no, it's true. Man, it is. Uh, it is a tough go, and I, I, I guess that that's sort of, you know, the danger of taking those mid heroes that early. I guess it wasn't like last. It was it a. It wasn't a last pick timber either, though. It was a last pick PA. So yeah, hmm. I would have preferred a silver edge carrier for them. Uh, I, you can't actually still build silver edge on PA. I actually don't think that happens that bad. He is going to go for a diffusal blade. For I'm not exactly sure why diffusal. What does the Fusel do for up here? It's extra agility, so you get more in power. Double, dip into, double dipping into agility is quite nice. Um, maybe also just trying to drain some of the mana that comes out from the timber, but if you, you're hitting extended periods on him, he's probably chakra and you to death. Yeah, I don't think it's... What else? I don't know. There's no Ghost Scepters. Maybe he can pop the, the Lincolns on Weaver, but you have to be a melee range, and you're not going to be a melee range unless his Fusel's already popped. Or his link has already popped. Maybe he's just killed a support, I suppose. It's a pretty good way to do it. Um, I guess too, if you do end up getting the cleave damage out onto onto like let's say uh, you know dog fights for instance, and that is a cleave hit onto timber, it's not going to be affected. The armor doesn't matter, right? Right. So that's the other play. Is like a, still a big RP? Oh, definitely. But as mentioned earlier, Magnus is not his best hero. Very as it came on the RPs. It only takes one. Let's see if they can do it, Mr. LGD. Oh, it'll take more than one. Okay. Game. <laughs> it takes like two good ones right now. Two good ones. Um, well, smokes right now, I am actually not seeing any on LGD. I don't know if they have any left in stock. This would be like the time to go for it, but like they might have already used them all. Well, there's smoke on IGV as oh, they wrap is. around from the right side. It could be the long way around. Eleven gets caught out. There's the initial jump, and there's not going to be an RP this match at all. They're all starting to fall down. Yeah, he's going to get ran down as well. Paparazzi all over him, takes him down, and now there's nobody left to defend the base. They're all just standing there. The Burrow Strike comes out, connects onto Ame. Sheep as well, coming in from Super. They find the silence. BKB pop. Maybe an opportunity to turn this back around. But they're being forced outside of their base. And in July, just walking away from Ame, does get blown up by the crit. And they also are able to find another with that duel. But can they actually keep alive? Maybe. That looks like the answer. Armlet toggle is no. They buy back on Victoria, but they're also going to be able to kill him off if they want, or just focus their sights onto the melee barracks. Yep, 411. It's not, not, it's not been able to cast our people's game. Man. Really, really rough game. Roche respawning in a minute and a half. Should be that everybody from IG Vitality will be back up. So, talk to me about this. Does this feel like it was more IGV playing up or LGD sort of playing down to the competition? Because. I don't think a lot of people were expecting this. Who, who? Uh, I, I, I watched LGD a lot during Mars TV, which is uh, very recent. And they played very well. Like, their teamwork was their highlight, yeah. I would say. Uh, and 
I don't know, maybe day two jitters, maybe they're like, oh man, we're on top of the group, and you get a little bit nervous maybe, because I, I don't think they expect you to be performing this well. And maybe now that they've lost a couple of games, they're like, okay, now now the pressure's off. Right. Yeah, I guess. I, it definitely felt weird, and it, um, I'm surprised that they ended up being able to come in. Not that I thought that IGV was bad by any means, but um, IGV, this... This game in particular, I think, was very well played by them. Super, I think, has been one of the standout vibes. Yeah. Because he, he killed, what, three heroes early on? It's pretty hard as a Shadow Shaman. That hero is slow. Yeah. 4-4-1 four, four, right now. 56 last hits and causing mischief and mayhem all around the map. And doing good buildings. Right. What a hero. Roche just... Five seconds away. I'm sure they'll, they'll wait for that on IGB. Continue to farm in the meantime. They have Shiva's Guard done as well as those Boots of Travel by Sakata. And it looks like they want to try and cut down this tree so that way they can place down one of the wards as well. Get good vision. The smoke that's coming in from LGD, it looks like they're going to find at the very beginning of Sakata. But you see all five of them jump in and Sakata doesn't care. He's literally running at all five of IGB and there is nothing that they can do to stop this. Trying to gank, trying to kill, trying to find a finish. Can they do it though? It looks like the answer is maybe, possibly. Is it going to be enough? They bring him down. Another big kill coming in. 11 though. It's going to fall to Paparazzi. You got the time lapse off. Three are dead in July, getting ran out. LGD somehow, some way, are pulling this one back around. Wow, them actually wanting to place that observer war hurt them a lot. What, what Sakata was doing? He was tanking for the golems because he wanted max stacks. But then he had to cut down the trees with his whirling blades, and he killed all the golems. So he only had eight stacks going into that fight, which is a big difference. We're talking about a difference of like 15 armor right there, and. I think if he had 15 armor, he would have been able to survive long enough after the duel. And that was a great RP finally coming out from 11. He had three heroes, and I believe almost all of them died in the cleave. So, showing some signs of life. They could have just stayed for Roshan, but they had different plans in mind. I think what they really need... Oh, wait, they did have Axe. Did Sephiroth get caught? Wait, did he, did he? He must have gotten caught in the RP as well, but he got sent Stampede off. Okay, just not... It didn't maybe look it like they were stampeded. Maybe it was off of him, too. That's another possibility. It was like he only got it after he died. I, I wasn't actually checking that fight, but it looked like they all got massacred. RP. Well, no RP for 40 more seconds. It looks like this is IGB's time. Go for a big play. And mid is the call. Do they need to be careful at all? Can you just like drop wards in the same way that they did before and have Timbersaw walk up front and center? As long as he has enough stacks on him. It's actually, it's actually pretty hard to max stacks this game just because creep waves like die so quickly and like you don't want to spend your time just sitting in neutrals not attacking. <laughs> it's, it's just too slow, but I think he does need max stacks. Once he gets max stacks, then you can go for it. You do definitely do have to worry because the support is like I think Shadow Shaman could die in no, actually, he went for Solo Crest, so he, he's not going to die in one hit. But Sand King could die. Maybe two hits. He has Veil, so he's a, a little bit of armor. And they will have that Stampede back up now, too, to help out if these things get a little bit scary. Um, he also saw the uh, Timber Saw go back for the Talisman of Evasion, so they have that completed. Paparazzi gets his Lincoln Spear triggered. They need a... They need something, that's for damn sure. Oh, they need Timber to stay alive, because he's the only one that can actually kill PA. Uh, because Weaver doesn't have MKB, so if you don't have MKB, you need magical damage to, to burst them. Or you need, I, I guess, potentially like a solo crest on a PA, but that's very unlikely to happen because he has MKB. So you need MKB in order to deal with this, and Paparazzi's still very far away from him. He's not going to be able to finish it before the Aegis is up. No. Well, and they also do have... Uh, RP back up as well, so there's a lot of ways for LGD, like, the, the way that they take the fight is very simple. It's just actually making that happen, which is the tough part about it. Doesn't that mean it's not simple? <laughs> <laughs> the concepts are simple, the execution is difficult, and skewer back in! That's a good way to start it, time-lapse already used! Another 
jump forward. Ame decided to go on to super, but immediately the stampede comes out. But BKB charge is going to be starting to wear down as well. Can they get away from there and actually survive with the rest of their heroes? Towards are starting to deal the damage onto the tower. Jump forward. Duel is coming out. The BKB is already there as well. The stun now down onto two. The winner is coming out. Maybe making it happen. Paparazzi so freaking low. It's going to die. The Aegis is gone. So two falling. They bought back on the Sand King. They hold on to their barracks. LGD making the plays they need. And can they get some more? Another skewer back. Tier 4 towers are there. They've caught the timber saw. A huge hoop stomp comes out, though, to break the combination. Can they stay alive? Another big stun is there as well. The burrow strike comes through IGV, actually making it happen now. And now, without the Magnus, it might become a little bit too hard. Ame caught another big hoof stomp coming through. The epicenter there as well. And can they kill them off? It looks like the answer is yes. IGV making plays and making it happen. Burrow Strike again connecting. Sakata does the whole combo. With that, it might just be LGD finally needing to tap out. Well played by Sakata this series. He did so much damage on Murata. I, I would say he like rivaled the Sven in damage output uh, that game. And I don't know who, whose idea was it to drop the Timber Saw, whether it was Sakata's calling for himself or the Captain Raiji IG Vitality um, pushing it onto him. But regardless, it was a brilliant pick this game and he was able to yeah, take up T3 with no support at all. Oh, Paparazzi's gonna die here. Oh, a big play actually. Maybe able to find that duel and not what you would have expected. Now a stun comes out as well. He buys back and time lapses in. Is this the throw that they need? And no, in fact, it's just going to be the death of LGD. GG called. It was looking good for a moment there, but as soon as the buyback came, it was over. Maybe a little bit before then it was over. Well play, so IG dragged themselves out of the drudges of the bottom. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a win. So they were not last anymore. They're, I think they should be two and three, which would put them at about sixth place. So comfortably out of range of getting eliminated at the group stage. Very well played. I think this is way better than I've seen IG Vitality in a pretty long time. Well, a great start to day number one in their first series. Um, uh, anything else that we need to think about for LGD? Like, is this worrying at all to you and the fact that they went undefeated all of day one and now starting off day two losing to one of the bottom teams in the group? They just need to get the groove back. I don't know what that is. Maybe get a massage. Maybe <laughs> play some scrims with your sister team. Maybe, I don't know, eat a good meal. Whatever it is to rest, relax, recharge, and get back into top form like they were yesterday. All right, well, we'll see if they're indeed going to be able to do that. And if IGV can continue to build up that momentum, more matches going all across these streams. Be sure to tune in, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for us here. We'll see you guys in a few.